Hello, everyone, and welcome to We Blame Harry Styles, a podcast dedicated to the work of musician, model, actor, and icon Harry Styles, as well as his numerous talented collaborators. This week on episode three, we're going to give a brief recap of the news that has happened over this week and then get into a discussion about Harry Lambert's video that he shot with Who What Where about the fashion of the fine line era. My name is Keith. And I'm Gray. And what do we blame Harry for this week? All our new listeners. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yes, the hours of time that that some of you have spent listening to us talk about Harry, we just want to say thank you so much. Um, we were kind of blown away by the response that we received to launching the podcast, which we finally did. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been great to get some like personal reach outs from some of you to tell us what you think about it. So yeah, it's been an awesome time. Yeah. And I mean, the analytics, like we're looking at the analytics, like, oh my gosh, people from all over the world. This is so exciting. Um, We are so grateful that you're all tuning in, and we hope that you continue to and that you enjoy this episode. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Kate, what do you blame Harry Styles for this week? So my fine line, I ordered one of those like vintage style fine line t-shirts in the color yellow, which finally came in, um, which I'm happy to say. And it's just so yellow. (laughs) And I blame Harry for my eyes being blinded when I look at it, at the br- at the bright yellow of the shirt. <laughs> do you have it on hand? How- is it like neon or is it? Oh, should I go get it? Yeah, um, I want to see. Do I? Okay. Let me step away from my mic for one second. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This is it. That's like banana candy yellow. It really is. I, for some reason, looking at the photo on the website, it didn't look that yellow to me. <laughs> and I, I, look, I really like the color yellow. Like, I, this is great. Like, I, I, love I it. just, it's just, it's just a statement. So I'm looking forward to making that statement uh, whenever I wear it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, amazing. Now that we have seen Key's statement shirt and thanked all of our listeners, <laughs> Uh, do you want to start us off on the news, Key? Sure. So we kind of hinted last week. We were like, ooh, who knows? We're kind of clowning. Let's see what happens for the fine line anniversary. So listen, (laughs) were we clowning? Absolutely, yes. Yes. But some things did happen. Um, So we'll get into that. So first, um, the Do You Know Who You Are website was updated with the fine line colors um, and some new messages. So that was really sweet. I, I love the how that's kind of been a consistent staple of this era and, and how mm-hmm. it's changed through each of the singles. Um, so that's been kind of a fun thing to track and it was great to, to see that on the anniversary. But oh my gosh, when the, when the tags started changing and when the do, do You Know Who You Are website started changing, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a sign. There's going to be even more. <laughs> oh, the clowning. <laughs> There was so much clowning. But yeah, the little hashtags mm-hmm. were so cute. They were so I, cute. There was this little video that somebody tweeted. I, I wish I could like give them credit, but I don't remember who it was, but um, of like a little emoji Harry like yeah. dancing to treat people with kindness, which is so cute. That was yeah, really so that cute. Was, so that was fun on the 13th. Um, how about those unseens from this week? I so called that. I was like, Kid mm-hmm. Harpoon's going to come through with an unseen photo, and he did. Um, And I got, so it turns out, I must have forgotten this because I remember that Harry actually mentioned this on Fine Line Live in LA a year ago, um, that Kid Harpoon's wife, Jenny, it's her birthday is Mm -hmm. um, the date the Fine Line dropped. So Kid Harpoon like posted a photo about um, Jenny's birthday and and Harry was in it. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a a, a nice to see an unseen. I was kind of hoping for more, but (laughs) I, I won't be sad with what we got. Wasn't he whistling? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a cute picture. And then Mitch came through with the drumming. Yeah. People were really clowning about that. And I don't think that that means what people thought it meant. I was like, oh, yeah, nice video for Mitch of of recording music for Fine Line. Like, that's nice. I'm glad he posted that. And people were like, this confirms that a Fine Line documentary (laughs) is going to be reaching the airwaves sooner than we think. And I was like, all right, I'm a clown, (sighs) but I that was not my takeaway. I have given up on the fine line documentary i have laid the clowning to rest i know i mean listen if there was evidence that it was coming i might change my mind but as it seems now it seems like the era is coming to an end uh Mm -hmm. if if they had it i i would have thought they would have dropped it then yeah Um, 
I would still love to see it. So, uh, oh, Harry, sure. send it to me if, if that exists. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, probably not. Yeah. Uh, and then, so we waited a while hoping that Harry would tweet. I know I was sitting at my computer and he obviously updated to Instagram first, showing his preferred app. Instagram stands know that you're know that you're uh, you're ahead of the game on this one. Yeah, Harry loves his Instagram children more than his Twitter <laughs> children. He tolerates us. <laughs> Twitter is trash, so well not 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 my corner of it, but generally. So he it's a smart choice. He proved me again that he's that he's ahead of the eight ball on that. He is correct. So his tweet was, Fine Line is one year old. I couldn't be more grateful for you all continually finding new ways to change my life. Thank you for listening and for everything else. I always love you, but especially today, H. Aww. So it was cute. an awesome tweet. I, I always love you, but especially today. Like I know. Yeah, that was great. I, I loved, loved getting that tweet from him. Um, Yeah. So it was a fun, fun day, the 13th. I enjoyed all the clowning that happened. Yeah. So uh, the other thing that came out on that day was the Harry Lambert interview. And we will touch on that later in the main segment. Yes, we will. But do you want to talk about probably the negative thing from this week? Yeah. So Love on Tour Europe was postponed. Um, it wasn't canceled. Yeah. So silver linings. I mean, I think like we actually said this in one of our earlier episodes that we knew that this was coming. Like it sucks, mm -hmm. but it's the reality of where we are right now. And so I'm I'm happy with the decision that was made. Um, I'm glad that they still have hope to mm -hmm. to do it at some point. And yeah, so it, it, it sucked to hear it at the at the time, but you know, that it was it was expected. I think we all knew that that was mm -hmm. coming. I feel more hopeful that if Love on Tour North America has to close, then that will also be postponed rather than canceled. And I'm not going to have to try and buy Love on Tour tickets again. Oh, God. <laughs> I shudder to think, yeah, what that's going to be like next time. So. Harry, Harry's really uh, going to bat for the people who fought for Love on Tour <laughs> seats. So thank you, Harry. And then Kid Harpoon was quoted uh, for an interview talking about music. He won like a songwriting award. Yep. And so there were a few things related to that. So do you want to read off this little quote and then also talk about some Instagram nonsense, Key? <laughs> yeah, so Kid Harpoon said um, in this interview with Music Week, uh, the glorified lads trip he and Harry took to Japan to write songs, um, one of which he says might yet see the light of day. Ooh. Kid Harpoon was like, clowns, get in my clown wagon. Get in the clown car. <laughs> And obviously clown car, we that's were. a clown wagon. What, what the hell am I talking about? Yeah, I <laughs> immediately, when I saw this, I was like, okay, are we talking like Medicine and Anna, like on tour, maybe mm -hmm. they'll play it? Are we talking HS3? Are we talking something else? Like, I, yeah, I'm just very intrigued by what he meant by saying this. It's a very specific thing to just throw out there. It is. And I am very intrigued because what was written in Japan last time, I believe, was to be so lonely. So Really? Wait, that surprises me because that's like Mitch's song, right? Well, Harry said that Mitch did a bunch of the instrumental and Harry wrote like the notes and lyrics, but he sent it to him in a voice oh, okay. note. And he was traveling in Japan with a guitar lately and he talked about writing on the guitar lately. And I assume that they were connecting over like the internet and stuff. So I'm wondering if there's another Guitar Lele song in store Ooh. for us that Kid is That'd teasing. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then, um, so Kid posted um, on Instagram about the award that he won. And we'll just like briefly touch on this. <laughs> Harry and, and Jeff mocked Kate Harpoon once again on his Instagram, mm -hmm. which is just so funny. Like, I love that both times they've been mocking Kate Harpoon. Like, <laughs> like, it's not, like, they, like, I guess Jeff doesn't really post, so I, maybe that's why, but it, that's, was just very funny to me, and it was a cute moment, and it made me laugh. Yeah, it, it definitely is very funny, especially because, like, yeah, like, both Jeff and Harry are mostly quiet on social, and then this is the time that they're coming out to be feral is when Kid Harpoon <laughs> needs to be clowned on. Yeah, Harry's like, <laughs> never will I touch an app unless there's an opportunity to drag Kid Harpoon. And then I will, and then see you there. My notifications are on. Jeff and Harry together hyping each other up. <laughs> and Kid like replied to Harry's comment that said they found 8 million opposing ballots. And Kid Harpoon was like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> 
And he's right. Yeah, he is right. He's a demon. Okay, and so... Um, Ooh, next one. Next one's a big one. Allegedly, Harry's going to be performing at the G Words alongside... <laughs> I think we can say it now. He's been nominated, so I don't think we'll jinx it. <laughs> okay, well, the Grammys, but I'm putting a bunch of candles around it just to yes, pr- protect. protect. Yeah, so he, he's allegedly going to be performing at the Grammys alongside Taylor, Dua Lipa, and Beyonce. So four Whoa. main pop girls. How you feeling I, about that? I feel great about it. Ben Winston, shout out to you. Mm-hmm. Who's produced so Ben Winston, a friend of Harry's, um, an old friend of Harry's, has is the producer of the Grammys. And so mm-hmm. listen, shout out to you, Ben Winston. Um no, I this isn't one hundred percent confirmed. I want to make that clear. So mm-hmm. They, like, said this, and then they were, like, kind of backtracked it, I think, a little bit, saying that, like, we think that this is who's going to perform. So, you know, throw this clip back in our faces if this this doesn't end up happening, but I feel like it will, and I can't wait to see what he's going to wear. I'm just oh like, my gosh. let it be a, a long gown with, like, a train and, like, like a backless dress. Like, I, uh. I just would die and i'm or you know what well, you know what i thought okay yeah what if they do something that's inspired by the fine line album cover look Ooh. like but it's like like a twist on it i don't know mm-hmm. i just was having a lot of thoughts about it yeah uh well they definitely did that for the brits with the um uh, lace mm, which yes, is which, which is basically the later. same yeah which is basically the same profile only in lace but yeah, I don't know. I keep imagining him in like this like glittery like starlet dress with like extra like like sequins and stuff like glued on yes. him, which I know is an image, <laughs> I but I just keep thinking about it. It's going to be great. Never in this whole era has one of his looks let me down. Like mm-hmm. we'll 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 be talking about his fashion like in depth later in this episode, but yeah, I'm I'm still looking forward to that aspect of it and to when he's going to perform. Like I like high likelihood of him performing Adore You probably or Watermelon Sugar. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd love to see him perform Fine Line, but because it's so long, I can't, (laughs) I don't think that that's probably going to happen, but hey, why, why not put it out into the universe now? People are manifesting full orchestration of Fine Line at the Grammys and it's like dream big. (laughs) (laughs) Dream big. Exactly, exactly. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, so our main segment for today is Harry Lambert and fashion in the fine line era. So, uh, for those who are unacquainted, Harry Lambert is Harry Styles' stylist. And I feel like in some of the conversation here, because there's two Harrys, we may refer to Harry S. as H and Harry L. as Mm. Harry L., Um, Yeah, that's a good way to do it. That's usually how I do it. So basically, a stylist helps put together an artist's, you know, celebrities, looks for certain events, concerts, red carpet showings, all that sort of stuff. Anything where somebody's going to be forward facing enough to get like professional photographs taken of them or video. Uh, Harry Lambert is there. He's on it. Uh, He and H have been working together for around seven years. And so today uh, we're going to talk about a video that he put out on December 13th regarding the fine line era and some of the stylings that he did then. Key and I watched the video and we broke it up into sections based upon what he talked about. So we'll start off with what he had to say about the Tim Walker shoot and just before we get into it, um, I loved this video and I loved hearing from Harry Lambert. I'm such an admirer of Harry Lambert's. I like we we talked about this a little bit, I think, in our episode when we talked about the golden behind the scenes video. But he's just so talented. He I just know. nails it every time. And he, I, I think there was a time, like we're both fairly new to the fandom, but I, I believe there was a time where he was not treated in the nicest manner by fans, and it breaks my heart because. You can just tell that he's such a nice man, and and I yeah I I loved getting this little interview from him. Um, I I would love to hear more from him in the future, in the future on topics like this. And um, yeah, this this was I mean this is why we're doing the main segment about this. this is probably my favorite thing that we got this week. Yeah, I mean I 
love Harry Lambert. I love him so much. Uh, for people who are vaguely acquainted with my podcast related Twitter, I actually have made a little timeline of some of the stuff that he worked with with H um, before he was a solo artist because they have been working together for a very long time and I just wanted to acknowledge his work. But yeah, he's amazing. Like, Yeah, and, and their, their friendship too, like the relationship that they've built throughout the years and and the the I think there does especially with the kind of things that Harry wears like there does have to be kind of a mutual trust um between a stylist and an artist and and there's such a collaborative um relationship between the two of them and and it was such a pleasure to kind of see it discussed in this manner so oh my god it just made me so happy I could watch him talk for hours so the first thing that he talked about was the Tim Walker shoot and mood board and I feel like he really talked about their general process for the first time, maybe. Like, I know that I've watched his little Instagram lives that he was doing at the beginning of quarantine, but he didn't talk mm-hmm. about it in exactly this way, like when he was talking about the work he does with H. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was just really interesting. So this little quote, uh, me and Harry will together put together a mood board for the album in terms of fashion. This involves me and Harry going through the runway shows and the lookbooks and we'll pull together pieces that we like. Yeah, I loved hearing this. I loved, and this is kind of like a recurring thing that I'll probably say throughout this segment because it came up so much in the interview, but mm-hmm. I love how involved like H, Harry Styles, is in this process. I I just thinking about like h like putting together a mood board is like very like i just think of like him on pinterest and i laugh mm-hmm. a little bit, even though i know that's not what it looks like but um yeah i i love the thought of them like collaborating together and and pulling out things that they like and and working together to create um such an iconic look like the fine line album cover look is iconic mm-hmm. um and yeah i loved i loved hearing this little tidbit about the process behind it yeah i i definitely loved it too i thought it was just a really cool thing to hear and especially like how he talks about how pieces come together so i thought it was fascinating how he talked about how this look revolved around the pants and then Mm, yeah uh everything was based on the pants and i think that that's kind of interesting because the pants do come forward in the photograph with tim walker like Mm. it has like this fisheye gaze and so and so his head and arms are back but the pants are forward so he does want you to focus on the pants and i find it's interesting how that's translated from the the board to the photo yeah um i thought that was really interesting i thought particularly it was so interesting to me that this look was not planned to be the Mm -hmm. album cover um so yeah so harry lambert mentioned um fitting day before the shoot um was done like alongside the sets with harry lambert harry styles Molly Hawkins, um, Harry's creative director, and Tim Walker, the photographer. Um, and they took Polaroids of stuff um, and pulled out looks that they thought would be great for the shoot. So if, if you've seen, like, and we've kind of hinted at this, like, we'll probably do a whole episode around um, the Fine Line album cover shoot at some point, but um, there's so many different looks that, like, would have resulted yes. in such different album covers that for this to not have been planned, for the pink and blue, like, and white, like, look to not have been like the mm-hmm. the one that they knew straight going forward that that was like gonna set the tone for the whole era was so surprising to me and it's just such a such an example of like the happy accidents that can kind of come from something because like I have said before it's like so iconic now I feel like right and I found it interesting like uh, that they said that because they mentioned that Shona Heath the set designer like she had built the sets so they were mm. doing these fittings around the sets which meant like they had asked for her to make the sets without knowing about the front of the album cover like imagine if that's crazy imagine if the album cover was him like i know that the original photo of shona heath with the heart was him like Mm. in this yellow jumpsuit or something sitting inside the heart it wasn't originally a nude um (laughs) so imagine if that had been the front cover instead you know yeah it's cool to think about i just yeah they and and harry lambert said in the interview like that they knew right away, like when they took this photo, this was the first look that they did on the day, and they were like, "Oh, this is it!" And mm-hmm. like, man, were they right? Like, so cool to hear the the behind the scenes of that. Yeah, so cool. Uh, so next up, he talked about the Brits looks, and I thought it was interesting that he said 
they seemed like they were meant to go together, but originally they weren't because that was the original thought that I had was that they were originally meant to go together. Yeah, they work so well together. Mm -hmm. Like the color palettes work so well together. There's like the purple that threads through two of the outfits and then yeah yeah they would they work really well together so yeah another happy accident mm -hmm. yeah i loved that happy accident i loved learning that they had saved the stage outfit what i found to be fascinating and that we're never gonna know is he keeps saying that he saved stuff but it's like when did you save it <laughs> like when did when did <laughs> yeah they, how long right when did the lace suit just happen upon your possession See, I I remember he did actually say this one time before. I'm trying to remember when, when Harry yeah. Lambert said this before. A at some point, maybe it was in his Instagram lives, he said that this was kind of, they, they had had this in the back pocket for a while and they were waiting for a really special moment. This is what made, makes me excited about the Grammys. Like, wh what what outfit is ha has Harry Lambert had saved for like three years that he's like, when Harry gets nominated for his first Grammy, this is what we're doing. Um, if that does exist, that, oh my gosh. thinking about that, like, sends my brain into a tailspin. Mm -hmm. um, no, but yeah, I he said this once before. So I love that idea of them... Um, like knowing like oh this is special we have to save this for something special and they were right like it's such a special look it's like like you touched on before it's like reminiscent of the album cover look it has the same silhouette with the suspenders and the high-waisted pants but um so special with the lace and with the gloves that we would kind of expect probably would have recurred a little bit in some of the other looks of this era like the gloves and the golden music video and and things like that so yeah it was a beautiful look for the brits I agree. And uh, I love that Harry has been seeking a yellow suit. Oh, yeah. I love hearing that, too. Uh -huh. I love hearing those little things about what, like, Harry Styles, like, brain thinks about, like, about fashion. Like, it's just so clear. I, I, I feel like so often with artists, with musical artists, like, fashion is just kind of something that's, like, to the side that, like, they let the people that they hire think about and, and they don't have that much of an opinion on it. And he's so involved in every aspect of it enough that he's like i've been searching for the perfect yellow suit yes <laughs> i love that like uh -huh. i i love it so much too and it's just yeah it's it's fantastic yeah i i love that like they have this meeting of minds though like oh yeah harry lambert knew that h wanted a yellow suit so bad and then he saw it in the mark jacobs fashion show and he was like this is the one it's it's mm -hmm. a women's suit is that okay and harry was like just tailor it to me and so they have like this beautiful like melding yeah. of minds and then i love when he was like yeah h wasn't sure originally about the purple bow but then mm -hmm. once he put it on he loved it and I mean, the purple bow is really the piece de resistance to this yellow suit, isn't it? Yeah, it, it totally makes it. All I can think about of that day is I, I remember watching, you know, the Brits and like everything. And all I think about with that yellow suit is A, that photograph of him with a kiss on his cheek. Oh, yeah. And yeah, that's a great photo. Uh huh. And B, him like being tequila drunk and like wandering around <laughs> and hugging everybody. <laughs> Yeah, and like the great moments with Lizzo from that mm -hmm. um, show. Yeah, that that was a great suit. Yeah, that was great. Uh, and then I love his comments on the Mary Janes on the carpet, uh, how we like to try to have fun. And if people don't necessarily get it straight away, we like that. It's kind of good. I just thought the that way was... he said that made me smile so much. He was like, yeah, uh, that, was, that was one of my favorite pull quotes from, from the mm -hmm. video. He didn't just saying like, it reminded me too of the of the controversy surrounding the Vogue cover and mm -hmm. and how like they're not out here trying to cause a stir like Harry and Harry Lambert and, and Harry Styles are out here kind of trying to like make art and to present that art you know in an interesting way and and to express themselves through fashion but yeah they're, they're aware you know that what they're doing is not what everybody else is doing and 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 that there's going to be a reaction and 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 I, and I liked hearing that um yeah, that it, that if it causes that that stir a little bit, that they're welcoming of that, and, and they know that, and and yeah, it was a cool quote. Yeah, I I definitely love that, and I love that he doesn't frame it as like, you know, I'm trying to be edgy and make somebody mad or something like with right. the gender nonconformity. Like he yeah. really is just like, you know, if people 
don't get it, that's okay. We want people to, I, I think it's very much an attitude of like, we want people to think critically about this stuff. Yeah. And like, he's going to wear it because he likes it. And if you don't like it, like, whatever, it's not for you. Like, <laughs> he's wearing it because he wants to wear it. The fans love it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, good on him for that. I do love those Mary Janes. Oh, yeah. Makes the look once again. Yeah, they're so cute just on him. And I love that Harry Lambert was like, no, go on. I, I have a feeling based upon some other stuff said, said in this interview that sometimes Harry has to be coaxed a teeny bit into shoes. <laughs> <laughs> like he's maybe fussy about his shoes oh that's cute don't say that that's mm -hmm. too cute oh <laughs> god if he could perhaps harry would wear his dirty vans on the red carpet oh he totally would and he's relatable for that because i too will buy one pair of shoes and never take them off for three years. i know me too me too not not to say that he disliked wearing the mary janes oh yeah no so speaking of, there was a little bit of, of a serious note in this that kind of relates to what we were speaking about before with how Harry Lambert has sometimes been treated, um, which is he definitely spoke to the accusations that he forces Harry to wear things. <laughs> and he and I have seen this discourse. So annoying that this even has to be addressed. And I, he was extremely nice about this discourse much nicer than i would oh, yeah. have been he, he was a doll about yeah, it. yeah much nicer than i would have been and much nicer than i feel uh and which kind of broke my heart a little bit that he was so nice about it the quote is long but just to read a few excerpts one he said i'm not doing my job if i'm making someone wear something because i just think if someone's not comfortable in what they're wearing then it doesn't matter if i think that it looks good I don't want him going out on the red carpet or on stage feeling uncomfortable or unhappy. So there's never really an element of forcing him to wear anything. I think we're in a good space where I know what he'll like and what he doesn't. I think we're on the same wavelength, so we're good. Um, I just found like that to be like really sweet too. Like definitely when he said, oh, yeah. I don't want him to feel uncomfortable or unhappy. I was like, oh, I don't want Harry Styles to feel uncomfortable and happy either. <laughs> Yeah, I it, it it you're right. It's like I I feel kind of two ways about this quote, right? Because on on the one hand, like I loved hearing this little tidbit about the relationship. I we've kind of talked about like the meaning the the meeting of minds that mm -hmm. that's happening between the two of them and how they work together really to create these things. And and that's so cool that mm -hmm. that Harry Lambert is so you know it is so good at like bringing kind of like these ideas to life and 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 that Harry is so involved in the process, but. It sucks that people assume that there's any sort of forcing or coercion involved. Like, Harry likes to wear feminine things. Like, get mm -hmm. over it. Like It is, in a word, uh, I think what the French call homophobique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, there's definitely an element there of, like, oh, Harry Lambert. Like, yeah, there, there's a gross, there's a, there's a gross element to that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so it sucks that he had to address it at all, but the way he did it, yeah, it was very, very admirable, and, and, and I loved hearing what he said. Yeah, very admirable. But yeah, I did like hearing, oh, he doesn't want hair to be uncomfortable. I'm just like... I, it, <laughs> well, I would hope not, uh, but... <laughs> I know. Uh, so next, moving on to Shepry. Uh, that's <laughs> S-H-E-P-R-R-Y. Uh, this was the Landvin sweater vest. So he said, normally I'll go through the shows and pull loads of looks and present them to Harry and be like, we could do this or this. I bought this for SNL as an option for him to wear there and was like, yeah, he just loved it and it just went on and that was it. Yeah, I don't know. I just think it's nice he talked about the little outfits too. Like he also talked about the Marc Jacobs, <laughs> the, the toxic sweater. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah okay so before we move on to that like mm -hmm. i just want to say the the sheep re look the sweater vest one of the best looks of the era it's top notch i'm obsessed with it i was obsessed with it when it happened the pink shoes perfect i love it so much yeah knockout so yeah i i loved i loved hearing harry lambert talk about it i didn't expect to hear about it in this video because it's just one of those like street like looks from the snl time but yeah i loved it one of my favorite looks of the era um yeah he almost murdered me through the internet for this because I said, yeah, "Let's get to your, let's get to your, <laughs> let's get to your opinions on this, please." Because uh, I'm ready to cancel you. 
I said that I didn't like the sheep free look very much. Listeners, can you believe this? I'm genuinely shocked. This is one of the best looks in the era. Okay. It's so cute. I, it's like Princess Diana-esque. Like, how could you not like this? I don't like how boxy the Lanvin sweater is. It looks so cute. He, it, it, it's got it, the little sheep on I it. wanted it to be more fitted like the polka dot sweater vest. It's not that different. It's just very cute. It's very soft. And like the little sheep, there's like a little texture on it. Well, well, I can't believe you don't like it. I know. I've betrayed him. I really, really have. Oh. Uh, I mean, listen, I don't really like his hair in the Brits photograph, and that's like okay, ends up being... I, I'll, I'll <laughs> listen. I, I hate saying things that I think people might get mad at us for, but I low-key agree on that one. I, I don't... Like, look, I'm, not, I'm not so hot on that one either. In the red carpet it, one. I know. Okay, so that red carpet look with his hair only, like the outfit is fire. The outfit's great. But yeah. like his hair, <laughs> I don't <fire>. know... <laughs> Yeah, his his grandma outfit, fire, notch, I, I know. everything. Uh, you described it as fire when it, like, <laughs> like that outfit specifically is very funny to me. But anyway, please continue. It is. But, like, it's so funny because, like, all of his pictures, I guess maybe because it was, like, the last official, like, public-facing event that he did, maybe. So, like, mm. it was, like, the Brits and then he did all those talk shows, but probably if somebody's pulling a picture they're gonna google harry styles and then it's harry styles at the brits but like i don't like his hair or like really his facial hair in that particular like set of red carpet photos i just don't think it looks good and it's of course like the photo that's used for everything anytime <laughs> somebody's like talking it's, about him on a show or whatever yeah. it's like harry styles this bad photo <laughs> I love to hear like the vision behind the hair in that photo. The facial hair like doesn't bother me, but I, I like I, like I trust that there was a vision, but I just don't know what it was, and I'm just curious. I, I would like to hear, you know, someone. It's cute. Like I don't think it's like terrible. I just it's 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 just different, and it's interesting. It's just a little awkward like i don't know obviously this is maybe not a we're hair. the ones that maybe this is the moment where harry lambert says if you don't get it it's okay and we're the ones that he's calling out <laughs> true well listeners if you need to put us on a stake for this at least give us some engagement on it on our twitter account tell us <laughs> would you like to burn us on a stake for these opinions on these looks <laughs> but yeah you mentioned the mark jacobs sweaters Speaking of well, the Marc Jacobs sweaters, I fucking love. They're the best. They're probably my favorite. Yeah, they're great. Um, I, if Sheepery is your favorite casual, like Marc Jacobs, those are definitely like my favorite. Oh, I wouldn't say it's my favorite casual, but we'll get oh, okay. there. We'll get there in a sec. But it's uh, it's just up there. Yeah, the Marc Jacobs sweaters, the stay away from toxic people. And I love that Harry, he has four of them. I think more. They, they said he... Harry Lambert said that um, they think they bought like almost all of them from the collection. I think, yeah, there, there's so many of them. I love them all. But we've only seen him in four, I think. Mm. So we've seen him in Stay Away From Toxic People. That was on Ellen. And then we saw My Life Is Crap. Yep. We saw that in the rehearsals for James Corden. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, there was like a, there was like a, a recent unseen that had a third mark jacobs sweater in it i think like a oh i'm not i'm one. not remembering but but yeah they're all great they are great uh if he wanted to wear them more i mean wouldn't be mad about shine it. on <laughs> and you said like and why can't you wear a fun silly jumper to go on a chat show and i totally agree yeah. it's like it just adds like i love how how much thought and of course like this is like his job that maybe this is like people mm -hmm. are like oh my god of course like he puts a lot of thought into it like literally he's harry styles stylist but I don't know. Like, I wouldn't think about that. Like, I don't think I would think like, oh, it's a chat show. So we're going to go with like this vibe, but everything's just so perfect. Mm -hmm. So like as fans, we just see the front facing part of it. We don't see the stuff that goes behind it. So that's what was so cool about this video, like hearing him say his thought process. And yeah, I was like, yeah, it is a silly talk show. And like, mm -hmm. yeah, where the my life is crap sheep sweater. And I think that like, it's interesting because because it looks so natural like that's really how he's doing his job as a stylist exactly. because he's making Harry look good and he's suiting it to the occasion so like kind of like if he's doing his job we're thinking about what Harry's wearing rather than like who made this happen right a lot of the time uh because it, it just looks like oh this is what Harry Styles would wear on a talk show but like not everybody's gonna have the knowledge and skill to pick that perfect 
combination of outfits and like just the thought that goes into it like I don't know it's very cool it is for sure it's very unique art form so now uh, we're going to talk about the J.W. Anderson cardigan so this is my favorite casual look of the Mm -hmm. of the era hands down if I could have I think if I could have one this is like a big statement so I might renege this later because I maybe I'm wrong and I'm forgetting something but I think if I could have one outfit from this whole era it would be this outfit that he wore on the today show the rainbow sweater the shirt the flared jeans which i'm obsessed with and look so good yeah i think this is my favorite casual outfit yeah i definitely love it i love everything that's become of the jw anderson cardigan how it's going to be in a museum how people made tiktoks about knitting it and just all of it it's just great Yeah, I think it just made people feel really involved in fashion in this era. And I feel like it helped spark, you know, real engagement in fashion as an art form. Yeah, it's just very, very cool. And yeah, so so just one more thing. So for the cardigan, um, Harry Lambert said, I remember saying to him, to to Harry Styles, uh, we went into the fitting room um, the day before and I was like, okay, I'd like you to wear this cardigan for the Today Show. We put the outfit together and then he was like, oh, it's great. I love it. I want to wear it, but just for the rehearsal? And then Harry Lambert goes on to say, when he did the Today Show before, the image that got circulated the most was the rehearsal photos for some reason. Um, And I was like, no, we need to do a really good look for the rehearsal. I promise you this rehearsal look is going to be really important. I just love this little tidbit because I've seen that too. Mm -hmm. Like the last time that he was on the Today Show, it is true that the rehearsal photos blew up because it was so cute. Like he refers to it here as like a plain brown jumper, but like it was. But it's so cute. It looked very cute in it. It was like a whole thing. So I love that little tidbit where he was like, he'd seen the fan reaction from the year before. They're like so aware of everything that the fans think and do. And like, Mm -hmm. and, and I loved too that Harry Styles like loved this outfit just as much as the fans were that he was like, oh, this is too good for a rehearsal. Like, we have to save this for something mm-hmm. good. And then Harry Lambert was like, no, like, trust me, trust me. Mm-hmm. And it came true, and he was totally right. Because, yeah, you mentioned it's in the Victoria and Albert Museum. Yeah, what a what a perfect, what a perfect little moment in this era. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I do love, like, because I have seen the Today Show rehearsal more than the photos from the Today Show also Definitely. and i had i had personally never made that connection until harry lambert had pointed it out like that the photo that was shared around more was harry styles sweater paws <laughs> yes, from that exactly. today show so um yeah just so brilliant and i think that that stretches too into like for example like the mark jacob sweater how for example like his rehearsal on james corden wasn't just a uh, plain brown sweater, but it was one of the Marc Jacobs. Like they're thinking about. Yeah, they know how much images circulate. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's cool. So uh, he talked about both the Golden and Watermelon Sugar music videos in this video, and um, we'll read quotes about it from both. But first, I thought it was really interesting how he talked about how they're basically like videos about the same person in different parts of the world yeah i kind of thought that was cute it's so funny because fans have been saying this whole time like kind of clowning <clears throat> like oh like what if the new music video is a continuation of the adore you video like and everybody always says that but um yeah it was cool to hear from harry lambert here that at least in his own head he kind of sees the golden video as a continuation of the watermelon sugar video in in a stylistic sense yeah i definitely love that uh and i definitely love that because of that they tried to make the colors polar opposite of each other. So he said that they styled him that way in golden blues and yellows and seaside tones. Uh, direct quote, we didn't want to take away from watermelon sugar. It felt like its own little world and gold needed to feel like another world. And I almost saw it as the same man in just a different place of the world. He mentions different accessories that Harry wears in the video. And I thought it was really cool that he mentioned fan engagement in that context. So he said it's it's a way for fans to almost be part of that as well. Say, for example, the necklace is something you can go buy and wear and almost feel like a part of Harry. Accessories are a really important part of Harry's style. I noticed this when I first became a Harry myself. Me too. That I was able to mimic his style and further like... Harry Lambert mentions buying stuff, but I remember I would find stuff that I already owned and kind of use it to 
mimic the way that Harry was dressing. Like I would wear lots of rings that I already had Mm -hmm. or like little strings of pearls that I already had because I wanted to be like him. And so it definitely does affect me personally that way, the way that Harry wears accessories. Yeah, like being inspired by his his style. And and yeah, fans can't obviously get like the clothes that, that Harry Lambert and, and H are able to get um, for price reasons. And because I would imagine that a lot of the clothes that they get, they get because he's Harry Styles and, and <laughs> designers are like, have this, um, which we can't do, sadly. Um, Alessandro, hook me up. I would not say no to that. But no, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I loved hearing that too and, and that he thinks about that. He mentioned that with the sunglasses for watermelon sugar that he saw people like buying similar but cheaper like versions of those colored, um, bright colored sunglasses from the watermelon sugar video. Um, and yeah, I think that's like a sweet little thing that kind of lets lets fans take a hold of that inspiration. And I love too like his connection with that. Like he doesn't say, you know, somebody sees this and they go and buy this exact pair of Gucci sunglasses or this exact type of pearl. Like he makes the outfits with Harry, of course, like inspired and working with these designers and for people who buy high fashion. But he also likes to feel like people are just influenced by his style and it doesn't really matter how they get there, but just that they're having fun with it, you know? Yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any pieces that you wear that are inspired by Harry Styles? I definitely, so I, I've i painted my nails a couple times since I've become a Harry, um, because mostly because of Harry and being inspired by Harry. And rings too, yeah. I never, I didn't used to wear rings that often. I definitely wear them more now than I used to. And I, I think that, that that comes a little bit from Harry for sure. Yeah, I, uh, I am a total mimic. I'm not original. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> I paint my nails all the time. Uh, I wear little pearls because he does. I actually, I have these rings that I bought from Amazon that have my initials on them that I was wearing every day in the before times. But because my hands are very small, I couldn't wear them on the same fingers that Harry wears his. So I had to wear them on like my pinky finger and my ring finger, but that's okay. I feel like Harry would accept me anyway. Okay, yeah, us, us trans masks are so oppressed (laughs) with trying to mimic Harry's ring wearing because that's a real problem for me too. My fingers are so freaking small and I'm like, I'm trying to be out here being like Harry, okay? And I'm oppressed because my fingers are so tiny. Just a little snippet of me and Key's early fandom relationship. (laughs) I was posting online some photographs of rings that I was wearing uh, because in early quarantine, I was still really trying to go for it with wearing rings like in my home I don't do that anymore (laughs) and he was in my dms like you wear a lot of rings because I was wearing like an obscene number of rings it was a lot it was like multiple on each finger it was a whole mostly costume jewelry I'm not like loaded but (laughs) but he was like okay so how do I wear rings like Harry does and I was like are your hands the same size as mine? Because the like the trick is that you you can't like <laughs> like our hands are not our hands are not sized for the Harry Styles rings, and we just kind of sat there in like solidarity solidarity, and we were like rip us, and I was like, but here's here's the secret of how you wear like lots and lots of rings anyway. So here's how you do a bunch of cheats around. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was definitely part of me and Key's very early fandom relationship was <laughs> That's so funny. Just trans masks trying to bonding over trying to be like Harry Styles. <laughs> it's fine. We're it's yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah, I will say, so talking about like the golden video, the watermelon sugar video, one other thing that jumped out at me um, that Harry Lambert talked about that I loved so much was the um, when he talked about their relationship with Bodhi. So Bodhi is like, I love all the pieces that they've made that Harry has worn. Um, and Harry Lambert said that their kind of ethos as a, as a brand is to make something new from something old. Um, and Harry Lambert noted that Emily at Bodhi makes things that have a real soul and energy. So he points out the yellow shirt from the Watermelon Sugar video, which is one of my favorite pieces that Harry has worn. Like, it, it actually pains me that there's only one of it because I want it and I need it. But um, yeah, and, and, and I thought I love this so much. He said that Harry introduced, so Harry Styles introduced um, Bodhi to Harry Lambert, which I was so surprised by. 
I thought that was so cool. He said, I remember Harry sending me a link to these quilted jackets way before anyone else had kind of picked up on Bodhi, like as a brand. Um, and I, yeah, I, I love Bodhi so much. Like I said, like everything that they've worn, like they, they custom made those pants for Harry for the Vogue shoot that I love, um, that I think are so beautiful and, and really capture the ethos that he was talking about of, first of all, making something new um, from something old. And also that really personal touch, something like with a soul to it. They, they, they customize these pants with like artifacts from Harry's life. Um, and yeah, I, I just love thinking about Harry, like, I don't know, scrolling through his phone, looking at quilted jackets and being like, Ooh, I want that. Better shoot up and text Harry L. Like, I don't know. I know. It's great. I just, I think it's so cool that like, cause I don't even think it's always like, Oh, I want that. Like that's, that's something very interesting to me is I think that like, it seems like they text each other sometimes about stuff that Harry's not even necessarily going to wear, but he's just in tune with fashion. He just likes fashion. Like he... Yeah, I love, I love knowing that about him. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, that's just part of like who he is as an artist is he just pays attention to fashion. Yeah, it's a unique aspect to him as an artist too. Like obviously there are other artists that care about fashion, but but in kind of the sphere that he operates, I think he is pretty singular um, in the amount of attention and care that he that he brings to this and yeah I, harry lambert is so able to kind of meet him where he's at and bring that vision to life and this was a great example of that yeah i guess what i would say about that is like it feels like you know harry definitely gets compared to other style icons and stuff and that's totally cool like if you want to compare his look and everything that's fine absolutely but i feel like with harry like one of the unique things about him is fashion really feels like his other job mm. because not only is he interested in stuff that he wears but he's interested in the fashion world in fashion designers and like everything that's going on in that world regardless of whether or not he's going to wear something yeah for and i sure. just think that that's really cool i don't feel like uh, i don't know anybody else who really has that same ethos right now so it's just awesome yeah um so he talked about pulling the pearls from the National Theater Archives. The pearls! <laughs> One of the signature things to come out of this era, for sure. Now, I don't know if you were totally paying attention to the pearl conversation when the pearls started showing up. I remember that they were like this great mystery mm. where they came from. There were like articles out. I remember, don't this, remember this early into when I was a Harry. Yeah, on my, uh, on my personal, very personal Twitter account. Uh, it's locked. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I remember posting about this because an article had come out wondering where the pearls were from. And uh, they were like, are they real? Are they costume jewelry? Like, did Harry buy them himself? And at the time, I had said, well, Harry's rich. Of course he bought the pearls himself. And of course they're real. And no, they were apparently fake <laughs> and from the National Theater Archives. So I was totally wrong. <laughs> swindled i was swindled it's true um but i thought that the story of this was really sweet do you want to read it out key yeah so harry lambert said a lot of times we'll go and pull vintage and i went to the national theater archives and they have loads of vintage accessories and clothes and stuff and they always have loads of strings of pearls and i was like oh that could be quite amazing for this shoot and so we took them to the fitting and harry styles just grabbed the pearls straight away and put them on and then just went can i wear these every day and I was like, yeah, of course. So I didn't even have to suggest it to him. And then he just didn't take them off. I loved this anecdote. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was so hairy. And I just loved it so much. Like, of course, that's how it happened. And he pulled them for himself. Like, I, I actually didn't think that that was what had happened because I, I had seen, like, Harry Lambert, like, on his Instagram wearing pearls and, and mm -hmm. I think some other people that, like, were in Harry's kind of group, like, wearing pearls and so I kind of thought that maybe that's where it had started so I was actually really surprised that that um that Harry Styles was the one who said like oh can I wear these every day like I love these like I it's it's just it makes it the fact that he wore them so consistently throughout this era like it just makes me smile it just makes me so happy knowing that and that he that those popped out to him and that that he that he chose those yeah it's great yeah I love that so much and also that Harry Lambert broke them. <laughs> Could have been another relic for a museum, but but alas, he broke them at the at the Capitol Jingle Bell Ball. Yes. So, any closing thoughts on anything else in the video, Key? 
Oh yeah, I guess I thought that on on the topic of the pearls, um, Harry Lambert had kind of also shared that he still wears his, and he was wearing them. He was wearing pearls in in this video um, that that we pulled these quotes from. Um, and Harry Lambert mentioned like I see kids wearing them now, um, like boys uh, wearing them, and it's nice because I remember when I first started wearing mine, a lot of people would stare and be kind of weirded out by them, and so it's really nice to see kids wearing them now. I just thought that was such a sweet little moment too. It's like, and and Harry Lambert makes sure to say like, I don't think that the reason that I'm like seeing people wearing pearls is like specifically because mm -hmm. of Harry Styles or anything, but yeah, just 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 to kind of hear that actually this had has kind of made a little difference in his own confidence in his own like personal wearing of them too is is the re the reaction and 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 people kind of feeling inspired by by like artists wearing pearls like this i it's been such a mm -hmm. such a such a nice thing to track throughout this like fine line era um him consistently wearing the pearls so much and and yeah any any of these little behind the scenes tidbits about it um was so great to hear Mm -hmm. I agree. So as a closer to the video, which was wonderful, uh, Guy and I were thinking, well, those were great, but there were so many other looks that he didn't talk about. So uh, Key, do you want to talk about some of the looks that you wish that he had talked about? Yeah. So kind of like the two main things that, uh, like, again, no critiques in the video at all. It was already like 13, 14 minutes long or something. So once again, very grateful that we got it. But I, I would love to hear a similar kind of little behind the scenes um, tidbits and information about the thought process behind the creation of the lights up looks. So that includes like the looks from the music video, um, the director's cut that we'll never get. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and yeah, I'd love to hear the thoughts behind the lights up looks. So we know sort of about, so there, the, the blue look that he wears in the video when the light like hits him um, and there's that feral scream noise. Um, mm -hmm. We know that Harris Reed made because they posted about it on their Instagram um, when the Lights Up video came out. But I, mm -hmm. I would love to hear more about that look. Other looks that jump out to me from the video are the sparkly, looks like a jumpsuit that, that Harry is wearing in the water with the red light on him. Um, oh my gosh, I know. Yeah, the, the looks from the Lights Up video are so good. And, and they're so, like, one thing that jumped out at me throughout all these discussions of, and us reviewing, like, kind of Harry's fashion throughout this era for this episode, every little thing is so distinctive and it's so perfect for what it is. Mm -hmm. So, like, the Lights Up video in particular, because that's, like, one of my favorite moments from the last year and a half. Yeah, every look, I feel like, is so perfect for the meaning behind the song and for all the other things it's paired with in the video. There's like his, what Harry's wearing when he's on the motorcycle, that kind of light purple look is like very reminiscent of some of the other looks from the shoot, but it's like in a different mm -hmm. color, but it's it's a similar palette, you know what I mean? Like they, they work so well together and I would have loved to hear from Harry Lambert, like what him and Harry Styles thoughts were behind that. Um, yeah, and it's just it's just interesting because it is all tied together. Like, you you notice in the lights up video that you know when Harry was talking about oh this outfit at the Brits calls back to the image on the cover of the album. Well, there's another outfit in the lights up video that calls to yes. the photo in the yes, album, the light the, blue um, one with the suspenders. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's very interesting, and then. Uh, do you want to talk about beauty papers? Yeah, so the other one that I definitely pinpointed that I wish we just heard like a little bit about is the beauty papers shoot. So, and the beauty papers is interesting, right? Because we just like got a bunch of photos and there's like no interview really besides that one video clip from it. There's no, so we really know nothing about it. And that's almost cool. Like it's like it popped out of nowhere. Um, and I do kind of like that about it. But now a little bit later, it would have been so great to just hear like what Harry Lambert's like vision for beauty papers was, like what the collaboration there was like with Harry Styles, like the fishnets, mm -hmm. like the um, Harris Reed headdress, the yellow headdress um, in that picture with Harry sitting in the chair with the socks. Like that was one of my favorite things to come out of this whole era was the beauty paper shoot. Everything about it is perfect. Um, and so, yeah, I'd love to hear more behind the scenes information about that. Yeah. I mean, I personally would listen to like a whole like oral history of beauty papers. Oh, yeah. Like the photographer, the magazine, like... Also, even up to like 
you know, talking about an oral history, even talking about the response, like uh, I was mentioning to Key the other day, I was like, remember how beauty papers, when we crashed the website, they just like their hands were like shaking and they typed it on their Twitter. Beautiful people. <laughs> Sorry about the website. <laughs> yeah, that was a funny moment for sure. Mm-hmm. So what do you, so, so yeah, so for me, the two kind of things that emerge that I wish we had more info on were beauty papers and lights up, like what emerges for you? What, what do you wish that we kind of could get some of these behind the scenes tidbits for? Yeah. So obviously I, I agree with both of those, but just to round out to honestly, like the first shoot that I ever saw Harry in was the Rolling Stone shoot. Mm. And I find Ryan McGinley to be such an interesting photographer. Um, he was who shot Harry for that shoot that I would really like to hear like what the process of collaboration was between Ryan and Harry Lambert and Harry and you know, probably Molly too. And I just think that the Rolling Stone shoot is cool because it's kind of like the oomph introduction almost oh, yeah. uh, to the era. And he kind of started out doing like some of these very like delicate looks, but you know, very interspersed with some masculine flair in Rolling Stone as well. And then through the era, gradually like in, you know, in The Guardian, he wore a dress and obviously we're at the point we're at now. So it, it would be very interesting for me to hear about the inception of the era and like how they sort of eased us into different types of fashion. Um, what did you think about the Rolling Stone shoot? I loved it. So yeah, so Rolling Stone was kind of before I became a fan of Harry. Like I was aware of him. I remember sending a picture of his Met Gala look to my friend and being like, ooh, like look at what Harry Styles wore. Like, don't you just love Harry Styles? Like I had very positive feelings about Harry Styles, but I wasn't like a fan of him. <laughs> I didn't follow his career. Right, um, right. And it was the same with Rolling Stone. I remember sending quotes from Rolling Stone to a friend being like, this is such an amazing cover. Like I was obsessed with all the photos. I loved the interview. I, yeah, I, I think it, it almost is an interesting barometer, right? Because both of us weren't fans at this point that this really reached me as a member of like, quote unquote, the general public, like as somebody who <laughs> wasn't like a stan, this shoot and the interview reached me. And like, I read it and a lot of other people that I knew that weren't like, quote unquote, like, big fans were talking about it and discussing it online. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I love it. The um, the picture that you have like in the doc here is my favorite look from the shoot the, the with the blue mm -hmm. hat um, and the veil that's like so beautiful that, that was with like kind of the blue suit with the shorts. Um, another look that I wish we'd gotten more photos from is the um, like kind of like the burnt orangey I think color it was like jumpsuit with the yellow scarf. I like love that look from the Rolling yes. Stone shoot. I mm -hmm. wish we'd gotten more photos of it. Um, yeah, it's it's one of my favorite moments um, of this era too. And it's it's funny looking back that I <laughs> like it, like I wasn't like oh my god like I would have flipped like if something like this dropped like a week from now like I would flip it would like stop my life for like a week like mm -hmm. I would it would consume me and I wasn't quite at that point yet but I yeah it's it's a good memory. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, for all that we know, there's one waiting in the wings. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Uh, yes, it would be. And then uh, the other thing that I thought would be cool that he had talked about was Eroda, like all of the outfits that go into the Isle of Eroda, because like that's like a whole project yes. that they just kind of like have used for this whole era, but not really talked about very much. Mm. Uh, and I just think that I would really like to hear what Harry Lambert has to say about styling Eroda and like what collaboration he did with any other stylists in styling the inhabitants of Eroda right. as yeah, well. Yeah, that's a good point. It's such a unified aesthetic. The the Eroda aesthetic is so particular and, and all the outfits that he wears in the video, um, which are all so good, all kind of share a similar aesthetic and, and same with his performance outfits. Like I remember the outfit that he wore when he was on um, when Harry was on the Graham Norton show, the outfit he wore when he performed Adore You on that show was very reminiscent of like the Rhoda aesthetic. And I, I, I just love, it's the same with how the jumpsuit that he wore on SNL, the sparkly jumpsuit was reminiscent of the Lights Up music video. So it's mm -hmm. like all these kind of unified aesthetics that go with like the particular moods of each song that I, that I just love so much. And yeah, I totally agree. I'd love to hear more about it. Yes. I love that very, very much. Uh, okay. 
So, are there any looks from this era that you don't like, Key? So, I wish that I had. It, it's actually difficult to find. If any listeners have, like, a master post of, like, literally everything that Harry has worn throughout this era, I'd love it if you'd send it my way, <laughs> because that would be great. Um, so, I could be missing some things in my thoughts here, but have I, like, outright disliked anything? No. But probably when we're talking about, like, my least favorite, I wasn't a huge fan of the Today Show performance look. And I think it mm. also, like, was kind of done dirty by the fact that the rehearsal look was so good. It's like the the pale pink um, suit jacket with the polka dot tie and the blue shirt. Like, it was fine. It wasn't, like, bad, but I, I didn't, like, love it. Um, it doesn't stand out to me like some of the other looks from this era have. Um, and then... Again, this isn't bad by any means, but I, I wasn't crazy about the, the Howard Stern look. I liked the pearls. Interesting. I liked that he wore Ooh, spicy. that on the Howard Stern show. Like I, But the like bright, bright green, I wasn't <laughs> as big of a fan of. Don't cancel me, you guys. <laughs> I still liked it. Cancel. But I, it wasn't my favorite. Yeah, I feel like uh, you have to be – the grandma chic has a delicate touch to it. <laughs> Though I wouldn't say that I necessarily dislike yeah, that look. I don't, I don't, like, really dislike it either. But, you know, we're, like, I, like, again, like I said at the top of the show, like, Harry Lambert, you're so talented. You're so good. Like, every look that you do is amazing. I, I have to really think mm -hmm. to find things that I, that I, that aren't my favorite. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously, as we have discussed, I'm sheep critical. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then also, uh, I was thinking earlier today, like, I do wish kind of with the, what was it, the London Secret Show? Because mm. I think that that was circulating around on my timeline. And I felt like maybe the suit the wasn't... The yellow suit? Yeah, I felt like maybe that one didn't have as much oomph as, like, you know, maybe the Marc Jacobs yellow suit or anything like that. First of all, I will say that the London live show suit, the yellow suit, I think is the same suit that he wore on SNL to perform Watermelon Sugar. So I think part of the reason why... Is it? Yes. It's just yellow and not red. Oh, you mean it's not like the same exact suit. It's just a different Yeah, it's a color. different, it's a different oh, okay. version of it. So it's the same suit, but it's yellow and not, and not red. And so that, I will say, like maybe part of it is that you'd already seen it before and he'd already worn it once. But also, because I, I, everybody's been sharing, the day that we're recording this is the anniversary of that show. And so everybody's been sharing all these video clips of Harry and Stormzy at that show and i have such a fond well i can't say i have a fond memory because i wasn't there <laughs> but <laughs> i wish i was um i i just love it because of all these photos of harry and stormzy where stormzy's like towering over him and like harry's like standing here in this little yellow suit oh and the clip that ends our show of the lights up um where he mm -hmm. says i do now after asking do you know uh. who you are and lights up is with the yellow suit so to me yes. like I like the yellow suit again it, by itself on its own. I don't think I'd be like, oh, this is a this is the best look of the era. But I like it. It's you know what I mean. Like it's associated yes, with these I things do. in my I mind. Do. So like I remember it. I remember it very fondly for that reason. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And I don't remember it without fondness. I do have to stretch and th like to things that I like because I don't hate anything that Harry Lambert has done by far. Yeah. Harry Lambert, if you're listening, I love you so much, <laughs> and you can come. You can come talk to us on this podcast whenever you want. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> yeah, I even manifesting that is like <laughs> that just feels like too big of a thing to manifest. I feel like really shooting for the stars, but yeah. So, uh, what do you think the long-term impact of Harry and Harry on fashion will be? That's such a big question. Mm -hmm. Um I just think they've really done the legwork to like make Harry Styles into a name that's like synonymous with what he wears like and that's not the case with very many people it is the case with some people but harry styles is is one of those celebrities and is one of those artists where his fashion is such such a huge part of mm -hmm. what he does and and i the other thing that emerges for me is i think especially throughout this era like gender nonconformity has been a big aspect of the fashion that that harry has worn and, and has shown to the world and i think that um and he's spoken about like the reasons behind that and and you know how on the howard stern show he talked about how he just wanted to like be authentic and like oh i paint my nails when i'm at home and so not doing it like seems like you know 
to, to be consistent, I, I need to kind of, it, it, it makes sense to kind of carry this through. And so I, I think him being authentic in this way and working together with Harry Lambert to, to, you know, express femininity as such a large artist at this moment in time, I hope that its legacy is to inspire other people to feel freer to express themselves the way that they want to. And yeah, that would, that would be a great legacy if, if that's what the legacy was. Yeah, I agree. Finally, to close up this section, uh, what thing would you like to see Harry wear in the future that he hasn't worn yet? What hasn't he worn yet? I don't. <laughs> do you I have know. any ideas for that? Like, I the only thing I can think of is like again, like what we were talking at the top of the show about the Grammys. Like, I'd love like a really dramatic, like mm -hmm. sequin dress kind of thing, but. I, I I don't know. Harry Lambert's smarter than me. Like, I'll leave this up to him. I nothing nothing strong emerges for me. What about you? Yeah, I feel very similarly. I would really like to see Harry in a ball gown, but in motion in the ball gown. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, we've definitely seen the photograph of him, but now I want to see it like you know shift and sway on his body and like have him like vibe. I want to see him vibe in a ball gown. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, that means like, I want to be a, I want to be a pretty princess. Uh. And with that, I think that closes out our main section. So, Key, uh, I think that it's time that we move on to our section called Must Get Rid of Toxic in Community. <laughs> we will timestamp this, obviously, in the description of the episode. To explain to the uninitiated, the Must Get Rid of Toxic in Community section is to lightly poke fun at some of the nonsense that you've seen online every week. So we read out uh, some comments that we've seen and we have a little LOL <laughs> at them and then we cleanse ourselves from them that way. So basically Harry put out a tweet saying, hey, you know, tour is postponed, sorry. And so one fan has some interesting theories about the real meaning of treat people with kindness. Oh God. <clears throat> they literally just confirmed yet again that TPWK is just a brand now and has lost its meaning by signing a scheduled management tweet with the phrase. The only tweets that might have been written by Harry are the ones with H at the end. <laughs> Open your eyes. <laughs> wow. My eyes are wide open after that. <laughs> See, like, at first, it just seems normal, crazy, but then the person, like, leans in, like, without self-reflection saying, open your eyes. I think that that's what makes this tweet for me. Oh, yeah, totally. It's just, like, it's just, like, w the wake-up sheeple of all of it. <laughs> and I'm just, like, and, like, this person, to be clear, like, on the show, we always make sure that any of the comments that we're LOLing at, like, are from that adults. they're not any that are from adults. So this person is like a full grown adult saying, open your eyes. <laughs> like, Open your eyes. Okay. Don't you see that everything is a conspiracy? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we're going to move to our outro. So, Key, are you looking forward to some non-hairy things this week? Yeah. So first of all, I want to mention, um, you know how every week you say, what's a non-hairy thing? And then I... Mm -hmm say a Harry related <laughs> This is not really Harry related, but I, I, I'm going to mention him slightly within this, so I'm, I'm sorry for that because apparently I can't restrain myself. No, so um, one thing that brought me some joy this week was the podcast This City by Clara Amfo. So Nick Grimshaw did an episode of this podcast. Um, Nick Grimshaw is like an old friend of Harry's um, that he's done oh, interviews a lot. And, and um, like, I just think that Nick Grimshaw is so funny and like everything that he does brings me so much joy. So yeah, so I listened to the episode of Clara's podcast that he was on and he talks a lot about London and like what got him started in radio and what his early career looked like. And um, I lived in London for a time and it was like one of the best times of my life. And so listening to that podcast this week, I just, it just got like the wheels turning in my head about the things that I miss and about London and um, it's COVID. So anytime soon, it's not like looking likely that I'm going to be going there. But uh, yeah, the podcast brought me a lot of joy. I, I thought it was really interesting. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, check out that. Um, and then the second thing is rom-coms. So I... <laughs> Um, it's in the run-up to Christmas. I've been watching a lot of rom-coms. Um, I a lot of been watching a lot of like 80s, 90s rom-coms. It's it's kind of difficult to find a rom-com that isn't offensive in some way. 
Um, <laughs> so many of them, you're like, oh, yes. And then, like, right before the end, there's, like, a transphobic joke. And you're like, uh, and I, so, so take this with a grain of salt because I, yeah, I've been, I love old rom-coms. Like, they bring me so much joy. I will acknowledge that there's a couple seconds spent cringing usually at, at, at a couple jokes here and there, especially from older ones. But, um, but yeah, so I watched Bridget Jones's Diary for the first time. Um, he has definitely been DMing me pictures of Hugh Grant with like long hair. Listen, and just like I just really like Hugh Grant. Okay, I I feel like this ties into your like this city too, where you're just like you're yearning for London, you're yearning for Hugh Grant, you're yearning for Hugh Grant in London. Was that is that's like the the gay version of what the the combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. <laughs> I just had no idea that you'd bring those two things together, and I'm just, <laughs> I just feel really called out. Um, yeah, but I do love Hugh Grant, and I, I think he's so good, and yeah. So speaking of Hugh Grant and rom coms, the I guess I'll just plug two. I'll plug two rom coms that are my favorite rom coms of all time. How about that? My two favorite rom coms of all time that I would highly recommend are Four Weddings and a Funeral, which stars Hugh Grant. Which if you haven't seen it, watch it immediately. And Moonstruck. Which stars Cher and Nicolas Cage, okay? So <laughs> that's certainly a pairing. <laughs> so those two rom coms are so up there for me. I think Moonstruck's on Amazon Prime. So if you have a night this week free and you're like, I need something, maybe you're not in the holiday spirit because neither of those are Christmas movies, um, and you just need something, I those two movies are some of the best rom coms out there. So, mm-hmm. but I do. I always have a weakness for for Hugh Grant, and I. <laughs> I feel very called out. I feel like Harry would agree with you. Uh, I guess, you know, one of my recommendations is I've been listening to a lot of the band Muse again, which isn't gay except for, is it? <laughs> like, I have been obsessed with these since I was a teenager. Uh, the album The Resistance and the album, I think it's called Absolution. Anyway, we don't know if the, anybody from Muse is gay. <laughs> But if you listen to those <laughs> albums, you will walk away from them being like, is someone from Muse gay? Like, it's it's just like these great, like, like religious guilt and like this forbidden relationship. And like, humanity is like dealing with ex- great existential threats and like, can our love save it? And like all this stuff. It's so great. Very dramatic. Recommended to all the gays. Uh, I'm always like listening to that. And that's why I'm like this. Uh, in terms of what I'm looking forward to, uh, I guess I'm just really excited that there's a COVID vaccine that's happening. I work in a public health adjacent position, and so I'm hearing a lot of updates. And in New York City, we vaccinated as of yesterday around 10,000 people, which wow. is just super exciting. Awesome. So, so I hope everybody else's towns are getting access to those, you know, life saving pharmaceuticals, and that we can start rebuilding again. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So do you want to just close us out? Kate? Yeah, absolutely. So you can contact us at weblameharrystyles at gmail.com. Email us with any thoughts that you might have on what we talked about today or just thoughts about the show. On Twitter, we can be found at Harry Styles Pod. You can follow us there, DM us there. Yeah, so, oh, and another thing that I wanted to mention is that if you have been enjoying the show, feel free to rate and review us on your preferred podcast app. So we'd so appreciate it if you just took a quick second and gave us a rating if you'd enjoyed it. Um, It helps us out. So yeah, consider doing that. Subscribe to us on your preferred podcast host to become notified of our next episode. Thank you for listening. We love you. Talk to you next time. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Good night.